Ahoy! Welcome to the Bottom of the Stream Movie Show. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 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 How are you, Nick? Very good. Excited? Yeah, I am. Why? Because it's always my favourite time of the week to talk about a movie. Same. Me too. I love talking about films with you. It's very fun. And this week we're talking about... I think this will be an interesting one to talk about, mm, actually. I'm not really sure where I stand on it yet. Okay. I'm, I need to I'm not sure where you stand on it. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure where I stand on it. Okay. But I'm not giving anything away. You're not. Your eyes are almost shut. Okay. I'm just staring <laughs> That's at That's just because I've got the tiny eyes of a shrew. <laughs> <laughs> They're like belt holes. That's what they I'm are a bit told. like belt holes. Yeah. You've got lovely eyes. L- lovely but small. <laughs> lovely but small. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, yeah, so this week we have watched a film called Villains. Uh, Villains is from 2019. It is a 15, runs for one hour and 30 minutes, and is currently rated at 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb. Quite high. That's Again, not bad. Two weeks in a row we're above five, and we don't get above five very often. <laughs> That's our benchmark. <laughs> Five's the benchmark. <laughs> um, this film stars a guy called Bill Skarsgård. He plays a character called Mikey. He is the brother of Alexander Skarsgård, who has been on the show three times Sometimes, before? Sometimes, Sometimes, yes. and he's a member of our Captain's Gallery. He is indeed. Which does. is our, our own Hall of Fame I'm type. staring at him right now over <laughs> your shoulder. Hall of, ta- Hall of Fame kind of yeah. thing? How many people are in the Captain's Gallery? Four. Four. Can you name them all? Uh, Mason Blair. Correct. Alexander Skarsgård. Correct. The lady from the film. <laughs> the lady from the film. There is a lady. Shannon Purser. Shannon Purser's in there. And also Robbie Amell. Correct. Four members then. So Bill Skarsgård is Alexander Skarsgård's younger brother. You're most famous, he's most famous, you're going to know him for playing Pennywise in the recent It. I do, yes. Adaptation. Yep. What do you think of that? I enjoyed the first one. I was less enjoyed the second one. I couldn't agree more. The first one's excellent. The second one is not. I feel two long films like that was a stretch. Yeah, agreed. It was the, the adult roles weren't cast well either. Yeah, it was. They just went for comedy people, and it just didn't work. Sure, but the the kid roles are perfect. All of those kids are amazing in it. I all of them. I don't think. I mean, this might be a controversial opinion for me. It's not right up there as a Stephen King book. It yeah. itself, no. There's a lot of drugs going on in that book. He was at his peak drug usage yeah. when he wrote that. And it's so it does, long. It gets by a lot on the fact that the iconography, I, iconography, Iconogra- I can't speak <laughs> iconography because we've already done an hour <laughs> of the villain. Yeah, yeah, agreed. It's a scary clown, you know. He's gone back to it a few times just lately. It's like the the book I've just finished, which we talked about briefly on the wave. He mentions the deadlights and that, and yeah. the people. There's a kind of version of Pennywise in that story. So he, right. d- he does go back to the, the Deadlights specifically quite a few times. But I think Pennywise is such an iconic character that you're right, it carries the book a little bit. Yeah. P- Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise was Oh, bar-bar. he was great. Yeah. Spot on. Couldn't be beat. You, they couldn't have cast that any better. Um, also stars a lady called Micah Munro. She plays Jules. We have met Micah Munro before. Yeah, we have. She was in Tau with... Yeah. Gary Oldman. She loves being stuck in a big old house. She does love stuck being <laughs> stuck, stuck in a being big in old a house. Uh, she's also she's probably most famous for It Follows, which is yeah. a modern horror film. Which sure. is a great horror film. She was in that. She's also in the Independence Day sequel that came out a few she years ago. She was pretty good in Tau. Yeah, she was. Tau was fairly, from what I remember, paint by numbers. Yeah. Didn't didn't really do yeah, much was, for me. But was. she was pretty good in it. Yeah, as she a, was pretty as good. As a sort of damsel in distress. 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 Yeah. Um, written and directed by a pair of people, Dan Burke and Robert Olsen. Do you recognise those names? I don't think so. We've met them both before. Have we? Yes. Oh, I did not know this. They wrote one of our previous films. They did not direct together. it. Together. They were, They always work as a duo. Cool. They together wrote Don't Kill It. Oh, okay. With Dolph Lundgren. Wow. Back, way, way back when. Yeah. Early, about the fifth episode we ever did, fifth or sixth. Like really early on. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised. Yep, they both wrote that together, but they wrote and directed this. Have they done anything else? Yeah, but nothing I'd really heard of. Okay. They've done like six or seven films together. They always, there like, seems to be like a writing partnership. Okay. But this, I think this was the first time they directed together. So it's a double director combo. But yeah, they wrote Don't Kill It. Do you have a one word review of villains? I don't really. I've not prepared. <laughs> shall I, just, shall I, just... I took a drink then while you thought of it and I wasn't prepared for you to say that and you spat it all over you shall I just shall I make one up might yeah, not be very funny that's the whole point 
<laughs> that's making me think that you sit for the whole week now trying to I think. do usually <laughs> like every night sit there eyes open <laughs> staring but you've not done that this week no okay <laughs> captive audience good one good one they had me as a captive audience today because I had no choice <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're coming around in three hours time. I've got an hour and a half to watch this film. Which was an hour and a half long. Which was an hour and a half long. And then I had to watch The Island. Wow. I left that till the end just in case. <laughs> just in case you turned up and we'd have had to postpone for a week. I wasn't going to watch it twice. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, in case you turned up early. and I didn't, I didn't <laughs> We'll watch it, watch it together me. before we start recording. Oh, why didn't I do that? I'd have had to watch it twice. Where does this film start, Nick? Uh, everyone put your hands up. This is a robbery. Yes, it does indeed. Well, it starts off with this like beach scene oh, going yeah, on, isn't there? Forget about like, that. We'll forget about that. Yeah. There's, there's a basic guy. There's like talking. some dreamy camcorder footage, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, he's just like talking her down. But then we we get straight into it, and a pigeon and a horse are holding up a gas station. Yeah, but it's not really a pigeon and a horse. It's a man dressed as a pigeon and a woman dressed as a horse. Correct. And they basically successfully kind of they're pretty stupid. They're pretty stupid. They're <laughs> But they do get away with money, yeah, and stuff. There's a there's a kind of comedy scene. So they hold hold up this gas station. The uh, pigeon, yeah, who is the male, yeah, of the duo, points a gun at the cashier, yeah, who passes out, yeah, basically. Then they can't open the till, yeah, because it's like electronic, and they have to buy something. So they have to buy something, and the till bursts open, yeah. and they get some so money. Like, oh, we're geniuses. <laughs> They get some money and they get out into their getaway car. Yeah, title card hits over the top of the getaway car. And they're just basically high on life. They're really excited that they've just successfully robbed a gas yeah, station. Yeah, gone away with this. Um, she's very excited. He's more excited because he's uh, getting orally satisfied. Oh yeah, she's like, <laughs> she's like, oh man, we we did it. This, it makes this her is really, really horny. sexy. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna go to town. Yeah, while you're driving. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, uh, having just robbed a gas station, they didn't rob any gas. No, because the car runs out of fuel. They've not done their preparation. They have. Uh, they have not prepared. They're a bumbling pair of idiots, these yeah. two. Um, this is Bill Skarsgård and, and Michael, Michael Monroe. Monroe. Yeah, who work really well together. I thought. I thought their chemistry was really good. I enjoyed. That. I thought he was good. Right. I thought she was great in this. Yeah, I agree I, with I, that. I thought they, because obviously we'll get into what happens, but they 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 both tried quite a fine line of being imbecilic. They're bad guys, but, but you, you end up rooting. for You kind of root for them, yeah. And they pulled it off really well, I thought. I agreed. I think both of them were really good. But yeah, you're right. She was incredible. He is really, really angry with himself that they haven't got any gas. And he goes to storm off. He wants to just walk yes. away and leave. Um, she kind of calms him down. She sits him down on the floor in the middle of this road. And she tells him you need a car wash. I was like, what the fuck's that? <laughs> and it's basically he lies down on the floor and she floats her hair into his face. Yeah. And makes it look like he's having a car wash on his face. Fair enough, it calmed him down. So her hair is like the curtains, the and curtains. He, all he can see is her face. Yeah. And it's like it's, a, it's like a yeah, happy like place. Say, it's like his happy place. Calms him down. Yeah. Um, but it, And it works because I think it's her. She spots a mailbox just over the road. Yes. So, ah, oh, we can go and rob a house. Or see if there's a car there and yeah. rob a car. Um, this it's was, like the only house on this country road, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, they're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, it's probably the biggest mistake they've ever made. <laughs> there's a car in the garage. They're quite happy about. So it's they a posh think car. It's a very posh car. It's a posh house. It's a lovely house. It is a lovely house. So he's like, right, well, let's get in the house. We'll nick the car keys. We'll get the car. There's nobody here. Doesn't seem to be anybody about. We're away. We're away. Here, he manages to pick the lock, but unfortunately, the, it, it's deadbolted from the inside. Sure. Even though there's nobody yeah, in. I'm just, just <laughs> clicking that myself. Unless they used a back door. Yeah, or must have but the front door was yeah. deadbolted. So they, they end up, he ends up having to crowbar his way into the house. And he does get him. So they have a bit of a search. They're searching around for the keys and anything they can rob while they're yeah, there. Yeah, they can't find these car keys anywhere. Um, she thinks, oh, I'm just going to, I'm a bit hungry. I'm going to have some cereal. Yep. She makes herself some shreddies or something. Uh, but it turns out it's stale. So she chucks that away. Yeah. Just throws it over her shoulder. The milk was um, fine. The cereal was stale. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> um, so at this point, she, they're a bit lost now because they don't know what to do they can't find anything and they can't think of and they their can't next think move. of their next move because they they need some drugs they're bumbling idiots they're bumbling idiots she's they're gonna like, take some drugs yeah she's like we need to clear our mind yeah you know what we always do in this situation we do some drugs we'll do a line yep so they do a line each 
And Mickey comes up with a great idea of siphoning the gas out of the car that they've got. This got a little chuckle out of me because he, <laughs> he, he inhales this line of cocaine. And then as he sort of points his head to the sky, he, he kind of goes, ah, we'll siphon the fuel. <laughs> Does. So like cocaine instantly. gives him an instant boost. Yeah. It happens a couple of times, doesn't it? But um, Yeah, so he's, uh, we'll siphon the fuel. We need a hose. And something to put it in. Yeah. So they need to go looking for stuff. So they head down to the basement. Now, neither of them wanted, I thought this was quite cool. Neither of them wanted to go in the basement because it was dark and yep. the lights didn't work. So they taught themselves out of, taught themselves into going down there together. Uh, but then when they get to the bottom of the stairs, they're like, right, let's split up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it's exactly what I put. <laughs> <laughs> they were scared at the top, but since they got in there, they were fine. Yeah. Number one rule. Yeah. Um, Billy? Um, Billy? <laughs> Mickey slipped, trips over a big mouth Billy Bass. That's where I was going. <laughs> and that scares him. Makes him makes him jump. It's quite funny. And then there's a huge jump scene. Oh, this shit me up. <laughs> it made me jump a little bit as well. I so, did not see this coming. Nor did I. So at all. We're and in, it really creeped me out. We're in the dark. And suddenly there's a little girl standing behind them both. Creepy ass little blonde Creepy girl. Creepy ass little blonde girl just standing there. Scared the shit out of everybody. Including me. I didn't think... Because now I'm like, oh fuck, is this a horror film? Yeah. So I, I had no, I hadn't seen the trailer for this. I well, had no I, idea really what I was getting into. And very rarely do. Sometimes we watch the trailer if yeah. if we've literally no idea. But but one of the things that I do love about this show is that clearly we're taking stuff that's at the bottom of the stream. Very rarely do we know what we're getting no. before we start the movie. Like you say, sometimes we might check. We'll out, read the synopsis. Check out a trailer. Yeah. But I love the sort of just. I have no idea what I'm getting week to week. Going in all blind. That is part of the thrill of this definitely agreed and if you watch along with us you'll get that same thrill yeah as i'm sure the people that do watch along with us will contest <laughs> in the discord come and join us in the discord um this little girl isn't a ghost no she's real she's real and she's also chained up she is she's got a ankle chain on a meaty ankle chain yeah um and she's all like dirty yeah she looks she's like been she's there been there for, there for a while Dressed in rags. So they start to freak out a little bit because they've now taken on a lot more than they can chew. Um, Jules wants to help. She's like, let's help her out, get her out of here. She's clearly been kidnapped. Mikey just wants to leave. He's like, We're in, we've wandered into some weird shit. Yeah. Let's not get involved. <laughs> let's just get let's out just of get it. Out. His name's Mickey. Sorry, I keep calling him Mikey. Well, no, he, he is Mickey, but I think he is called... Mi I'm sure a bit later on she calls him Mikey, just once or twice. Maybe. But I've got him as Mickey. As yeah, well. he is Mickey. Jules is like... We are not leaving. 100% we are rescuing this little girl. I'm yep. like, I can't just leave her stuck down here. And, and, and then Mickey's like, oh, to be fair, that karma might help us. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's, let's do it. Let's get her out. Let's find something we can saw through. We can't, we're not going to break the chains. Yeah. Let's try and saw through that pipe that she's attached to. So they head up to the kitchen because there's no saw in the basement. They're going, they're going to try and find a steak knife yeah. to saw through this pipe that she's chained up to. And then we get another jump scene because they're in there and then suddenly there's a, elderly couple standing next to them not they're not elderly they're not elderly sorry <laughs> <laughs> they're older than them about your age <laughs> no they're older than us they're in their like mid 50s yes. probably uh, they're just standing there in the kitchen one's holding a baby yeah and they're just like hello why are you in our house they're all quite posh aren't they well spoken yeah and um this is uh so the lady the wife is played by mrs kevin bacon yes indeed kira sedgwick um she's excellent in this as well she is really good. She's a great actress. Yeah. I, I my, <laughs> This is my problem. <laughs> I couldn't help not see uh, her from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Because -Nine. <laughs> she plays uh, Captain Hole's boss. Oh, of course she does. Yeah. <laughs> Wunch. <laughs> Jeffrey Donovan plays George. Who's Jason's dad. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you've done there. Very good. Thank you. Um, yeah. They're both fakes. Everybody in this is really good. And these is pretty much a four. Well, I know the little girls in it. Yeah, but it's pretty much a four. Yeah, there's a cop player cast. on, and there's a girl, but that's it. That's All four of them it. are good. Yeah, they are. They are really good. No one, th good to very good. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. nobody bad in this. No. No. Um. So they get freaked out when they cut this couple standing there in the kitchen. Sure. Mickey pulls his gun. They're like dressed for like Sunday best. Aren't yeah, they? they're all He's got like a cravat up. and a... yeah, lovely house, lovely yeah. dress code. Mickey pulls his gun on them, um, and he's like, is this your house? And they're like, yes. And he's like, it's yours, you live here, you don't rent it. He's, like, he's trying to establish that these two are the two that have got the girl changed up in the bedroom, in the basement. And it, it turns out they have. 
George explains that it's his daughter. Yeah, he says we're disciplining her. And this is her being punished. She's yeah. been naughty. So we chain her up in the basement. They're lo- Ever thought about doing that? No, I haven't got a basement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but if I had. <laughs> the, they're both like southern dandies, aren't they? Yeah. This couple. Yeah. There's something creepy about that southern accent. There, it just me. works, doesn't it? It just it is creepy, and it just works as creepy. The whole kind of like American Gothic type thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's very strange. So, and George convinces them to have a scotch, come down, let's sit down, let's talk about this, let's see what's going on. Yeah. We can work something um, out. And he says, George says, when they're all sitting there, he's like, let me state my case, let me tell you what's going on, yep. and we'll see if we can go from there. So he, he says he used to be a salesman, he used to be a good salesman, um, and he knows how to read people. He can sure. walk into a room straight away and know exactly what these people are about. He's a man of the about. people. He's a man of the people. And he says, I can read you too. He says, I know I know for a fact that you're on the run. I'm imagining you've not got a job. Yeah, he um, says, I spotted that car down the road. Yeah. I think that was yours. Yours. And you've obviously came here looking for my car yeah. to continue your get away from where, whatever you're getting away from. He's got them spot on. Yeah. That's exactly what was going on. And he basically says, he gives them that chance. He says, take the car. Um, if you want the car, take the car. I won't call the. I will call the police, but not till. He says we'll give you a head start. We'll give you a head start, not till a long Say, time. We or, came home and the car wasn't there. Yeah, or you could kidnap my daughter. Yeah, he says you take the car. You don't mention the girl. Yeah, job done. Yeah, we'll call the police in a few hours' time when you're well away. Yeah, or if you kidnap my daughter, I'm going to call the police straight away. Yeah. The police are going to be on your trail. So he gives them that choice basically, and Mickey says, "Well, I'm quite good at reading people too. So let me read you," and. He basically calls his bluff, doesn't he? He's like, I know for a fact that you've got a young girl chained up in your basement. You're not going to want to get the police involved sure. in anything. I'm taking the girl. And he calls his bluff out. He's like, he does. we're not leaving here without her. Um, so George and Gloria, who's the lady, agree to this. They've got no choice. Yeah, Mickey's like, oh, the one with the gun. Fine, yeah, you've got his you've bang got to right. You've got his bang to right. Let's go down and uh, unchain the just, girl. Just before they do that, and they go in and like potentially do this, hostage release i guess <laughs> yeah i thought there's a really interesting line in here which is then not picked up on right through the rest of the film because i thought this might be an interesting thread and then it's kind of just left dangling right and mickey in a, a rare moment of like ast- astuteness is like this is a really nice house you've got nice clothes it looks like you're really rich why is all your stuff old yeah he did say that because they're a really old telly didn't yeah they? and they've got this like push button tv and the decor's really old i'm like and it just adds to the creepiness yeah i was like oh that's interesting what is the story behind these people and then we never get it never really goes anywhere but it right? never goes that deep is it no. does it into the character because they're kind of stuck in a point in their lives yeah but that's not, that, that that's not much of an explanation um i just thought it was interesting yeah, i you're was right. like oh that would be a cool thread to pull and then they don't no, <laughs> it's true, they don't. So they go down the basement, they unlock the girl. Jules and Mickey are like, right, let's go, let's get out of here, we've yep. rescued you. The girl doesn't want to go anywhere, she just doesn't move. Yeah, she's, she's completely... Almost catatonic, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's completely non by it. And then Mickey grabs her and tries to take but, her. Yeah, he sort of takes her by the hand and yeah. tries, well, come on, come with us. She bites him on the hand yeah. quite hard, and as she bites him on the hand, George headbutts him. Yeah. And then it, it kind of cuts to black, doesn't it? I mean, yes. A bit of time passes, I guess. Again, you see, you see some of these dreamy images of jewels above him and then yeah. a bit of beach. Yeah. That sort of thing. He's got this dream, hasn't he? That I don't know if we, we find out about it later yeah. on. Yeah, they want to move to Florida, basically. They want to move to Florida. We'll, we'll, we'll get to, to what their business is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will get to what their business is. Uh, when he wakes up, he's chained to a bed Yeah, by his wrists. Gloria is in there with him. Yeah, she's been kind of looking after him. She's trying to seduce him. But she is now, She's yeah. being seductive to him. <laughs> we find out as well that Jules is also chained up in the basement yep. with the girl who we find out... I don't think she's called Sweetie Pie, but it's the only thing she's referred to as yeah, in the whole film. Is, yeah. And it's what she's credited as okay. at the end of the film as well. Um, so that's what I've written in my notes. Yeah. Sweetie Pie and Jules are chained up in the basement together now. Uh, we go back to the bedroom yep. where Mickey is held yeah, we do. hostage. And Gloria does a strip. She does. She does a strip tease for him. She's trying to turn him on. And... It starts weird. Yeah, it does. And it gets really weird. Yeah, it really does. Because, like we said, Kira Sedgwick's really good in this. Yeah. This is creepy as balls. Yeah, she's so creepy. She plays creepy so well. She's spaced out. 
yet weird yet yeah. threatening yeah the camera All angle as well was from his, a low down perspective as if he was looking up at her yeah and it made it look like she was in some sort of weird tunnel yeah and it just looked creepy it looked it was a really creepy camera angle to go with her creepy vibe and she does this strip and and she's like <laughs> she wants to be called mummy <laughs> she does she's really creepy yeah and then she gets really angry yeah because mickey does not get a boner yeah he is not turned on by her. She freaks out and it literally does freak her out. Takes her out of the moment completely. So she starts she, choking him. She, yeah. And then she just leaves. Yeah. So she has. I think he kind of blacks out again. Yeah, I think he does. Because um, we cut down to Jules and she's telling Sweetie Pie the story of when her parents left and what was going on in her life at that time. Yeah, she's like, I didn't know they were leaving. They said that I, they, yeah, was, they were going to get a bit of a throw, apples or something. Yeah. yeah. It didn't really mean anything. No. Um, then we get cut to the next day. Yeah, um, it's the following morning. Mickey's still clo- uh, tied up to the bed, and Gloria's uh, with him again, and she's showing him some old photos. Yeah, she's still carrying on this baby that we've seen her uh, with a couple of yeah. times. Um, and she tells the story of how her and George met, and this baby that they've had, and she drops in a really weird line because the pictures are really old. Yeah, and she's like, "This is Ethan, our child," and then George and Mickey says, well, "Where's Ethan now?" And he's like, well, "He's in his cot in his bed." Yeah, but these pictures are like twenty years old. It's it's bizarre. Yeah. Some shit, some weird shit's going on. I've written. She's mad. Um, then Mickey calls her bluff a little bit because he says to her, "Come on, mummy." Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he says, "Since since last night, I just I can't get you out of my head." It's all right, Kylie. So it's, <laughs> it's like I'm spellbound. Yeah, give me one more chance, mummy. <laughs> I'm definitely cutting that sound piece. Out. <laughs> <laughs> um. So she starts kissing him and rubbing him and touching him, and he's imagining that it's Jules doing it to yeah. him, which I imagine is having the desired effect. Sure, he's right. trying to, he's trying to, yeah, I don't know, get a <laughs> get aroused, mock boner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that a big fake boner? <laughs> um, and she he manages to trick her into unlocking his handcuffs. Yeah, he's like, I want to touch you, want to touch you, and then he grabs her by the hair and just launches her off the bed <laughs> like full power. Yeah, he threw her some distance. And then runs. He literally gets his clothes <laughs> back on and he his legs it. He fr- it's really, it made me chuckle because he throws her off the bed. And now he's, he's, as he's running out of the room, you just hear him go, you sick fuck. <laughs> but then she starts screaming for George. Yeah. And Mickey re- reaches the front door. Yes. And then all of a sudden there's a bullet hole in the front door. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit. So George shoots at him. George says, look, get back up here now. I'm a, I'm a marksman. I'm not, I missed you on purpose then. You're fucked. Get back upstairs. And he does. Mickey's got no choice. He goes back upstairs. Well, no, they, he takes him down. No, he does go upstairs. They go upstairs first. They go upstairs first. And then George is like, well, I don't want you running again. So he shoots him in the leg. Yeah. So Mickey's now got this gunshot in the leg. And then he takes him down to the basement and ties him up with jewels. Yeah. Ties them together. So they're, they're like back to back, aren't yeah. they? Then there's a throwaway scene of a tow truck pulling up to a car. It's their car. It's getting towed. Yeah, it's getting. Yeah, it's their car. And this is where well, they. Well, it's start. not their car. It's the last the, car they the stole. Car, I guess yeah. the yeah. car they were in at the beginning of the film. It's about to be towed away, and they have a bit of a chat about this business that they're going to start up when they get to Florida. I'm not sure this is viable. Oh, I don't think it is. It's a lovely idea. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's a very dreamy idea, yeah. isn't it? So their idea is to every morning go out onto the beach. Yeah. So they move. This is why they want to move to Florida. Yeah. This is their business idea. This yeah. is their business plan. So they want to go every morning. Get up. Go down onto the beach. Gather up as many seashells as they can. Pretty ones. Pretty ones. Unusual ones. And then sell them to the tourists. Yeah. Because there's therefore no expenses. Everything they're selling is free. Pure profit. And then, but then Jules is like, so what happens when we get really big and we have to employ people? And it's all, it's all a bit weird. And it makes it you goes all Dragon's Den, doesn't it? It does. And these two are very that like, pitch. it makes you realize that these two are not quite the full ticket either, I don't <laughs> think. Um, and that's their idea. Um, but he's like, we can't do any of that while we're handcuffed up in this basement. We need to get out of it. Yeah. What's the plan? What's the plan? And then he has one of his brain waves. Bill Skarsgård plays these brainwave scenes really yeah, well. Yeah, he, so he does. You can see the light just trigger on in his head. Jules has got her tongue pierced. Yes. She's been playing with it quite a lot through this film. Yeah, because it it's annoys him when she like times. rattles it against, against her, teeth. her teeth. Yeah, it irritates him. So he's like, I can pick these handcuffs with your tongue piercing. Yeah. But you need to be able to get it out. How are we going to get it out? How are we going to get it out? So yeah, he, he says to her, put your ball <laughs> between your teeth yeah. and just pull it out. Yeah. She's like, oh, I can't do enough. I can do it. Yeah. Then she tries to do it. She can't do it. She can't do it. Her tongue's not strong enough. Yeah. That's what she said. Could you? I was. Well, I was watching it, thinking, could I do that? 
I feel like I've got my tongue pierced. No, me neither. But I was don't like, could, so. could you have enough strength to do that yourself? I don't think. Probably not. I don't think so. Not unless you really worked your tongue out. It really hurt. Yeah, like I had a hench tongue. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, so he's like, well, I think I can, I think my our faces can reach each other. Yeah. So I think I'll be able to bite it out, bite of, it out of you. <laughs> and she's I'm like, like Fuck, that's really going to really hurt. I'm like... <laughs> I'm still not sure about this movie. <laughs> I, and I'm like, okay, it's been funny. These, it's creepy. And then it's got about, so there's probably about three or four. So this is the second one of these just random scenes of gore in it. Yeah. Just weird. Uh, which are like, they're small things, but things where you go, oh, fuck, that really that, hurt. That's really horrible. That, that's yeah, right. made my skin crawl a yeah. bit. Yeah, you're right. And biting someone else's tongue piercing out is pretty horrific when yeah, you think about it because that's exactly what happens now so yeah their, their faces are close enough to each other for it to do it so she sticks out a tongue he bites down on the ball <laughs> and pulls it out of her tongue yeah and her mouth obviously fills with blood he's got the tongue ring in his mouth and then george chooses this time to pop up with some dinner for her. yeah he's got some lovely got some creamed spinach or yeah, something. cabbage and broccoli i think um obviously neither of them can open their mouths yeah because Mikey's Mickey's got the tongue thing in his mouth, and she's got a mouth full of blood. Yeah. So they both refuse this food. They won't talk. They're just like, mm, mm, mm. and he eventually leaves. She as soon as he leaves, she spits this blood all over the floor. He gets the tongue ring out, and he does pick the lock with it. Yeah. But he picks her handcuffs. Yes, because he, he can't, can't reach his own. Reach his own. Um. So she gets free. Um. She tries to break him out of them and breaks the stud in the handcuff lock. Yeah. So he's stuck. He's stuck there now. Then the little girl who was also down there with them, remember They're, they're at another dead end now. They're at, yeah. This is like the third or fourth time in the film. Oh, shit. Okay, we've done that. But now what's next? Now what do we do? Because you're still stuck here. She's going to have to do whatever they do yeah. next on her own. The little girl points to a laundry chute that's just across the way in the basement. You feel like she has used this before. Yes, maybe. So Jules decides to climb up it. And we get a very weird point of view scene of her. This is quite a cool shot. It was quite cool. It would never, she would have fell down about oh, yeah. 14 times while she was She'd doing be it. She'd strong. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because she was like shimmying up it, but yeah. her hands and legs were never touching it all at spider manning up. Yeah. So she climbs up it. She manages to get to the upstairs of the house. Yeah. So she's gone up two stories in this tube. And she gets into the baby's bedroom. Yeah. Little Ethan's bedroom. He's in his cot. He's in his cot. Yeah. So she picks up this baby. She's it's not... It's not a baby. It's like a porcelain, creepy it's a porcelain doll. doll. Cut back to George. George has discovered that Jules is no longer in the basement, so he's beating on Mickey. Yeah. Trying to find out what's going on. Uh, and Mickey tells him, look, she's gone. I'm not telling you how she got out. And George's like, she better not be going to the cops. Yeah. Mickey says, no, 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 she's not going to the cops. We've got a prearranged meeting place. Yeah. And she's expecting to see me there in about an hour. If I'm not there in an hour... Then she'll go to then the cops. Then she'll go to the cops. And yeah. you, my friend, are in a Screwed. world of pain. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Jules is still upstairs holding this baby. Gloria comes in. Jules manages to hide in the wardrobe quickly. Yeah. Gloria's doing creaky baby mummy stuff with yeah. this little doll. Well, and she obviously goo, goo, thinks gaga. she's a real baby. So George relents. George is like, okay. I, I I've got no choice I've again. You've choice. beat me again. I'm going to let you leave. So he takes him to the front door. Mickey makes it to the front door. Opens the front Again, door. Again, he opens the front door this time. So he gets so close every time. And then Jules thinks that Mickey's about to be killed because of the wording that was used. There was, a, there was another creepy bit, isn't, wasn't there, where she was in the, the, ward, the closet and Gloria was outside. Yeah. And she just turned and she was about to notice her. Yeah. And, and then, then George, George called her, her downstairs. Uh, so Gloria heads downstairs. Jules... Is still upstairs, but she thinks that they're about to kill Mickey. Yeah, because there's some wording that was used. That they were letting still him leave, got the gunpoint at like him. He was going to shoot him. Yeah. So she storms out onto the ba- the landing, and she's like, "Don't kill him!" And she holds the well, porcelain baby, Ethan, over the edge, over the balcony. Gloria freaks out. Oh yeah, George. She's going loco at this point. George knows that it's not a real baby, so he's not that bothered. Um. No, he's like, ah, you nearly got out. Yeah. <laughs> he's so close and yet so far yeah. um whilst he's not looking though gloria grabs the gun off george and shoots at jules yep who ducks out of the way and drops the porcelain baby over the balcony oh he's in a million pieces it shatters into a million pieces infant death 
<laughs> Instant infant death. <laughs> Obviously, it was the second worst baby death that we've ever seen <laughs> in this show. What was the first peelers? Yeah, <laughs> I never saw that. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> Um, it smashes. Gloria freaks out. She's like, "Oh, I can fix him. I can fix him." Uh, uh, she's t- she's insane. This woman. Yeah, yeah. she's completely batshit. And then in the next scene, they're all sitting down to dinner. Gloria's coping with this. It's, it's an instant cut, isn't yeah, it? Instant to like cut. sitting around the dinner table with a yeah. feast in front yeah, of them. Yeah, Gloria copes with loss and psychosis Stress. by yeah. cooking. Yeah. Um, we find out that Mickey and Jules are both gaffer taped to chairs. Yeah. Um, and there's a feast in front of them. And they've got their hands free, so they have they, they can have some food. George kind of explains what's going on, but we kind of figured it out by now. Gloria always wanted this child. Yeah. They couldn't have children for whatever reason. So, they, so he kidnapped one. Yeah. And but she sort of fell She fell apart. She didn't she didn't, knew didn't that it wasn't that her kid. baby. Yeah, yeah. She didn't want that kid. He she told him to get rid of it. He couldn't. he couldn't do that because it's a kid. So the compromise they came to was we'll keep it locked up in the basement. Uh he also yeah. tells them that you know, he's not going to kill them. Yeah. He didn't kill the kid. He's not going to kill them. Yeah. They are just going to leave them yeah, they're gonna, in the house. Yeah. Uh, they're going to leave Mickey and Jules. Yeah. To and be found. To be found by the police. At some point. At some point. They're going to leave. Start a new life, basically. Yeah. Gloria talks about her mum for a bit and her childhood and how she grew up and how she got this doll for Christmas. But it turns out Jules and Mickey have been drugged. Yeah. They've, uh, the shepherd's pie was, was, was laced with laced with drugs. With drugs. He's like, you didn't really think I was going to not kill you, did you? <laughs> um, no, George. George at this point reveals his real plan. He says, "You're drugged. When you've passed out, I'm going to top you up. Going to look like you've broken, yeah. wrecked the place. Couple of junkies. Had a junk you've OD'd. We're scot free. Yep, yeah, job done. Everybody's happy till the doorbell rings. Yes, and it's a cop. Of course it is. He's it's a nosy cop. He's come looking around. Uh, he's going around the neighbourhood canvassing because of this robbery that's happened and this abandoned car that was parked just down the road. Yeah. Uh, so he asked George a few questions. Uh, George comes up with some excuses, some stories. Basically, the cop's happy. But George, when the cop goes to leave, can't close the front door. Yeah, because the front been door's crowbarred been crowbarred open. open. The cop eyeballs this and thinks, that's a bit sus. I'm going to go in here and have a look. Yeah. So he says to George, do you mind if I just come in and have a look around, as cops do? Goes in and has a look around. Uh, meets Gloria, the Jules and Mike, Mickey are no longer at the table. They are not. <laughs> There's a quite a funny scene where she's trying to tell him what she's done with them, whilst the cops there and yeah. they're trying to like mouth the words to each other. She's put them in the gym. She's hitting them she's, in the gym. She's like trying to do like tricep curls. Yeah, to, to show, show him where they are. Show George what she's done with them. But he can't understand what's going and on. And she's moved them bloody quickly. Yeah, because she has. Because George is like, "Oh, you're coming in, are you?" Yeah, at the door. So she's managed to manhandle these. Dead, not dead, but Passed unconscious out. bodies yeah. that, that were gaffer taped to chairs. Are both, both probably bigger than her. Yeah, definitely both bigger than her. Both gaffer taped to chairs. So she's had to undo the gaffer tape, hide that away, and get, get the bodies r- out. And get rid of their plates. Get rid of all their plates. Forks. Get them into the gym. <laughs> a little bit of creative license yeah. to use there a little bit. Um, Jules wakes up. And these drugs were not as powerful as they thought they were, obviously. Well, I think the implication being that these two have got quite a high tolerance, tolerance for drugs. Yes. Um, the cop's still looking around the house. He says, can I go down into the basement? We know the girl's down in the basement. Yep. The girl, they, he does go down into the basement. George pulls the gun on the cop. The uh, cop can't see from behind, yeah. from behind. Um, but then he gets a call over his radio to leave, basically. Yeah, say, saying, well, we've got two suspects. Yep. Might be those, uh, those, that pigeon and that unicorn. Can you yep. come and and help us out so he's like fair enough i'm gonna have to go nice to meet you yeah leaves enjoy your dinner he leaves <laughs> meanwhile while this is going on jules is kind of awake but not fully act, fully able to control no, her body she's, she's having to drag herself she's around literally this room. dragging herself around this room to her her bags in there as well yeah which is full of her drugs yeah um super powerful <laughs> wakey ruppy <laughs> drugs because she takes a line of coke and instantly again she's like Woom, back yeah. to normal she's fine Every, all her muscles wake up she's all good she tries to give some to Mickey he's still fast asleep um, so she just lays him on his back and puts him on his nose and then puts his hand over yeah. his mouth puts her hand over his mouth yeah. until he breathes in and then he wakes up from the drugs magic super drugs he, she, he starts screaming but she tells him to shut up she says I've got a plan let's do this George and Gloria after the cop leave Go to the gym to get yes. their bodies, and they're not there. No. They're what was there. the significance of the boot in the garden? I think the boot in the garden was 
because there's a they notice a boot out of the window. Yeah. The gun. I think that was to say we've left fire this oh, window. Oh, do you think that was? Oh, that is was that supposed plan? to be Mickey's boot? Yeah, I think that was and their he plan. Loved it out there. Yeah, I totally missed that. Because <laughs> Jill said she'd got a plan. I think their plan was make them think that we've left yeah. by putting a boot out in the garden. Because yeah. instantly George and Gloria go outside, go outside and run I, across. I didn't pick that run up. across the estate, but they haven't left. They're still in the house. So they've now got the house to themselves. Yes, because they used to have run off somewhere. They released the girl. They released Sweetie Pie. No, she won't leave again. She still doesn't want to leave. Um, and George and Gloria start having a row in the feet in the middle of this wooded area. There's yeah, there's uh, the rows are mirrored, aren't they? Yeah. So they're both having the same row at the same time, yeah. pretty much. The two couples. Yeah. Gloria wants to go back. She's like, let's just forget them. Let's go back to the house. Well, she's like, and uh, George says, "What do you want?" She says, "I want to start again. Let's just yeah, go. Just leave. We'll, we'll pack but up all our we'll stuff. Start, we'll find another place. Start we'll... again." Job done. We'll leave the kid in the basement. Yeah. We'll forget these two ever existed. Job done. And eventually, Jules and Mickey agree to... Well, they convince Sweetie Pie that she needs to go as well. Yeah. So she does. She starts running off. Well, because Mickey apologises to her. Yeah. Uh, and then George and Gloria head back to the house. They notice that Sweetie Pie has been missing. She's not there anymore. Yes. She's been released. And also that his key car keys are missing. And then you get this really cool scene of George in the basement. And he can hear the car yeah. start above him. This was pretty tense, I it thought. It was really tense. He knew exactly what was going to happen, yeah. but it was really tense. And they're all in the car. The three of them are in the car, waiting for the garage door, to, the remote control garage door to yeah. open. And again, you knew... You know what's coming. What's going to be behind this garage door. it happens in every single yeah. film ever made. But yeah. it didn't make it... Yeah. You'd be disappointed if that didn't, didn't happen. Ha- yeah, you would. Point. Exactly. You know what's going. When the garage door's fully open, George is standing there in front of it, holding his gun, pointing yeah. it at the car. And he's trying to, he convinces them, look, he's trying to say to them, look, get out. Let's go back to what we, where we were. Yeah. Get out of the car. You can't leave now anyway. You can't beat me. He says, you can't win. You can't win. You can't yeah. beat me. My, Mickey turns to Jules and says, I fucking love you. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Now duck. Yeah. <laughs> that's the line. I, I thought line. this was sweet. I wasn't expecting to get a little punch in the heart. No. And I, 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 I it, This got me, this did. I've yeah. got to say. So she ducks. The little girl ducks, and Mikey, Mickey floors the accelerator straight through George. Yeah. They pile over him. And then stop, because Mickey has been shot. Yeah, like George just, just three before, or four times. Yeah, George, just before he went down, Mick, George unloaded his gun. So George has been run over, we think killed. Mickey he's dies. Like on his way out. <laughs> he's, he's quite rapidly. Basically, George is trying to sort him out, help him, but he just dies in her arms. And point. these two are stupid. They are naive. Yeah. They... They are likable, and they are. They did love each other. They really did. They all everything they did was for each other. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah, this it was got a gut me. punch. I it say. was a gut punch. We don't see many main characters die in our in the films that we do. Yeah, it was a bit of a. It was a bit of a gut punch. Yeah, I was, I was, I was sad. Yeah, me too. Agreed. Thought they were going to get away with it. We didn't get very long to be sad though, did we? No, because this made me jump as well. <laughs> it really did. It got me. Got me. <laughs> so Jules is sitting on top of. Mickey's body. Yeah. I keep trying to. I keep going to call him Bill. That's why I keep <laughs> stopping. She, she's sitting on top of Mickey's body, and suddenly George pulls up out of nowhere. Yeah, grabs her by the hair, pulls her through the window, all in one swift motion, and he starts strangling her. Yeah, on the drive, and his face is like all fucked. Yeah, his up face now. is all busted up. He's got a big cut through his forehead and down the side of his face. His like lips hanging off. And then, but, and then he says, "You thought you could kill me, but I'm never gonna die." <laughs> like like the bad guy. And then you hear the click of a gun. You're like, ooh, sweetie pie standing there with a gun pulled at George, a uh, gun sighted at George. Yes, and he's trying to. He obviously goes back into sweet dad mode, yeah. tries to talk around a little bit, and then this bit's fucking brilliant. Oh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> she blows a hole in his head, but we see it from the reverse. We see brain cam. We do see brain cam. And he gets shot in the eye. Yeah. And then we end up looking out at Sweetie Pie through holding the, this gun. Through the hole in that was head. a great shot. It was. It was awesome. It was really, really nice good. little bit of cinematography, I thought. Yeah, agreed. So George is dead. Yeah. Mickey's dead. Yeah. Sweetie Pie delivers her first and only line in the film here. Yeah. She says, I want to go with you to Jules. Jules. Yeah. So Jules is like, fine. Let's get out of here. We need to, uh, I just need to do one thing. So she goes and she gives Mickey one last car wash. Yeah, she, she lies looks, him back. Lies him back in the seat, sits goodbye. over his body, says goodbye and rubs her hair on his face again like she did at the beginning. 
And then Gloria shows up. Yeah. <laughs> She's Gloria, packed. She's packed. She's ready, ready for to a go. Road trip. She's not heard any of these gunshots or car crashes yeah. that's gone on. When she's starting, she's now talking to George as if he isn't dead. She sees him. She sees him lying on the floor. And she goes off the reservation. Yeah, she loses it completely. She's, she doesn't see him as a dead person. No. She's just talking to him like she was she's, with a baby earlier. It's she's, really creepy. Yeah, it's fucking well she, creepy. She's like, oh, I'll wait with you. Just, yeah. We'll wait just a little bit longer. We'll just yeah, wait. We'll just sit here and wait. I was like, <laughs> fuck me. Kira Sedgwick is awesome in this. Yeah, she is. So creepy. Yeah. Proper, proper creepy. <laughs> Jules grabs the gun when Gloria comes out, but decides to just leave her to it. They're like, yeah, she's not. She's, like, she's, she's not do even on this us. world anymore. Yeah. She's fine. And they walk off together. Jules and Sweetie Pie walk together. A lady in a car comes along eventually. Just, I'll just stop you here. Because at this point, my internal monologue was going... This better not be another crazy person that's picking them up. Because <laughs> I was kind of like, is this going to have an ho- a ending I'm going to hate? Sequel tease. Yeah, where they're going to be picked up by another psychopath. Yeah. But it wasn't. No. It, it was, was a, a nice, kindly, old, kindly lady. old lady who said, where are you girls going? And Jules says, Florida. Yeah. And then we get over the end credits, you see them frolicking on a beach in Florida. Collecting seashells. And then they sell shells. They've and got a store. They've got a little store selling seashells. Uh, and then there's a really random animated end credit. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, it's cool. But didn't fit in with the... No, it's very any, out of place. Any um, theme yeah. of the film whatsoever. And that's it. That's the end of the film. Yeah. What do you think? I really enjoyed it. So did I. Like, I properly thought this was so much fun. Agreed. Yeah, I thought... I, it, it flew by. It was great fun from start to finish. It was funny. It was heartwarming. It was scary at parts. It was creepy as fuck. Yeah, it was all of that. And I didn't expect. No, I didn't. I didn't expect it to be as creepy. It made me jump twice. Yeah. Which is quite rare. Yeah. I didn't expect it to make me almost shed a tear. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was really funny. Agreed. Um, I think all four of them were really good in it. X, all four main characters are top, This is a top proper top. hidden gem. Yeah, it, is. it really is. I don't know how it's a hidden gem. Why is... Bill Skarsgård's a big name. How's he making films in 2019 that are not being released in cinema? I would argue that three of the four of these are... are yeah. I mean... Um, this isn't a Netflix... A pretty, pretty... Yeah, pretty big name. Yeah, I agree. But Netflix... This isn't a Netflix original. No. This is a film that Netflix have purchased and put onto their stream. The, the, guy, was, the guy who plays George, Jeffrey Donovan, he's not yeah. a big star, but he's one of those faces. Yeah, you like, know him. Oh, yeah, I think he was in... Um, I always get these mixed up. Not Suits. Mad Men. No. I think it's Burn Notice. Okay. One of these shows. It was like on for 10 years and you right. just... Yeah, he, you, he had a face that I face. knew, but I yeah. didn't know what it was from. Um, but he, he was excellent. He was creepy, but Sedgwick just takes it to another level. Yeah, she does. She really does. Creepy as fuck. I, the, probably one of the creepiest roles I've ever seen. She's um, just insane. She's batshit crazy. There was a nice bit as well, which we, this is by the by for anything, but we, did, we didn't mention it. So when... Um, Near the start, when Jules and Mickey first break into the house and they're looking for these car keys and they're turning the place upside down. Yeah. Uh, and Mickey accidentally knocks over an old video camera. Yeah. And it's like footage of someone being tortured. Yeah. So I, I, I my assumption was that, so George and Gloria had basically done the same thing. They, This isn't their house. They'd broken in and they've yeah. killed whoever. <laughs> Whoever's house it was and yeah. have been living there ever since. Yeah, I... Strong recommend for me. Same. I really enjoy it. I, this is the sort of film I would have sat and watched on a Saturday night with a pizza and a magnum and really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's freaky, definitely. it's funny. It's a bit it has a, It's got a bit of everything. Yeah. I I strong recommend from myself as well. Yeah. Do you want to try and turn the tide on it? I think. I'm not changing too much. No, same. My question is, would you have turned the volume up a bit on everything? Yeah, maybe. Could you That's go a bit further? Kind of what I was thinking a little bit. Uber, make the creepiness factor a little bit more. Make the humour a little bit more. Still keep the humour. Yeah. But can can George and Gloria be even more dangerous? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I I think I think you could do that. I think it works a little bit as well if he shows a bit more fear of her. If he, George is a little bit... Because he loves her and he's taking care of her. Completely, 100%. But if he's also got that fear of her, that makes her even more creepy. Because she's, she's unstable, but she's not... I think she's not evil. No, not at I all. I don't think. I think he he is. 
Yeah. So he'll do anything to she, that she wants. But. He is evil. He's been driven to evilness by his love for her. Yeah. But she's just batshit crazy. And he sees that. And yeah. he's out there to protect her at all costs. And she, but she, she's, she lacks the capacity to tell him what anything he's doing is wrong. So they're, yeah. they're stuck in like a vicious circle. Yeah. They're stuck in a time loop, which is what this <laughs> TV, not time loop, time warp, which is what this whole TV was about, I guess. And I think if he's a little bit more fearful of her situation it makes her creepiness even ramps up her creepiness and i think i'd have gone a bit more bumbling with one of the main two gone a bit more humorous i think that's probably tricky because like yeah I think, you don't want to go too far with it i think like i said earlier they're treading a real fine line of being naive yeah and but still likable yeah you don't want to go too stupid but i think you could have probably ramped it up slightly but this film's pretty pretty damn good i don't there's not a lot i would have changed no I, i'm just thinking yeah maybe a bit more money a bit more confidence do you do you up the couple more set pieces maybe a bit the more horror yeah a bit more gore yeah yeah because there was some good little set pieces in this but you, you probably could have done more with the setting as well if yeah. i'm honest there's a big house we don't really see much no, of it true. i know I, I get that's probably the down, little girls a bit down of for a, budget reasons the little girl's a bit of a mcguffin as well and she? she didn't really do anything yeah she doesn't really need to be there I see why she's there, but she could have been a bit more. You could have done a bit more with that character. Yeah, maybe. it's probably a bit under underused. Underused. Cool. But I, I suppose all in all, there for for a, a movie of this budget, this they're reasonably minor complaints. But I think Absolutely. I think there's something you can build on there. Yeah. yeah, this is a strong recommend from both of us. I feel yeah. definitely. Do you want to talk stream table? Sure. Twenty third film going into the stream table. This one, yeah, two left after this. Whereabouts am I reading from? Do you want to go? I think it's top half. Yeah, easily for me. Bullet Head is currently number ten in the chart, followed by Urge, then SPF eighteen, Time Trap, Triple Threat, Shadow of the Moon, All My Friends Are Dead, The Disappearance of Clifton Hill, Deirdre and Laney Robert Train, and currently at the top of the stream is In the Invisible Guest. Where do we even start with this one? It's not like anything else on that list. I've got a decent idea. Okay, well, you start us off then, and we'll go from there. I was called out a bit in the Discord today. I saw this because <laughs> you don't stand up to me enough. Apparently, it was pointed out to me that I didn't stand up enough to you last week regarding the Invisible Guest. Yeah, I didn't. No, I thought it was a great film. Yes, it is a great film. But I was wavering about whether it should be top or not. Yeah, because I, I liked it, but I wasn't really. I wasn't. I didn't really feel. I wasn't passionate about it. Fair. I thought it was fine, and that's kind of where I was with Deirdre and Laney. Rob, Deirdre <laughs> and Laney rob a train as well. Yeah. And I wasn't being like. I wasn't trying to, like, roll over. I just didn't care. I wasn't that bothered <laughs> about the movie. Yeah. That's why I didn't really put a fight. And I also think sometimes, I've learned over this uh, <laughs> doing these stream tables, you got to play the long game. Agreed. And you got to think. I'm probably not going to fight for this one because you never know what's around the corner. With that in mind, <laughs> I think this is the best film we've seen this season. Ooh, okay. That's... It's definitely the most fun I've had. It's definitely the most fun I've had. Easily. I'd agree with that. <sighs> it's better than The Invisible Guest, and that's the top of the stream. It's definitely better than Deirdre and Lady Robert Train. Is it better than The Invisible Guest? I, for me, it's it's not really close. Really? Yeah. I, I just think this had a bit of everything. It did, Yeah, it did. Um. I'm not against putting it at number one. Good. In the slightest. I'm not at all. If I ro- if I roll over, am I going to get called out next week? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Stop calling matter. us out in the Discord. It's our Discord. <laughs> Leave us alone. Stop bullying us. Um, no, come and call us out. That's what yeah, it's there yeah, for. That's absolutely what it's there for. We're never all going to 100% agree on everything. I have no issue with this being top of the stream. I, I think The Invisible Guest is a better film. But I think you're right. I think this is the most fun we've had. This is a wild ride. It is. And it's... It, like we said earlier, it's got a bit of everything. It's really good fun. It's got some great, great performances in it. Some of the best performances we've ever seen. I, th- I think, uh, arguing against myself slightly, because I always do this. <laughs> you do. If You'll end up in like seventh in a minute. Uh, no. <laughs> what this might have going for it is slightly the element of surprise. Neither of us knew what we were getting here. No. Neither of us have ever even heard of it. And all those things we've talked about are true. It's creepy than expected, funnier than expected, and... More heartwarming than I expected. Yeah. The Invisible Guest was a good movie last week. Yeah. But it was pretty much exactly what I expected. Okay. Because it had, we did see it had a high IMDb rating. Yeah. So we knew it was a crime 
thriller. Yeah, you know you're getting a crime drama I, with a twist at the end, and that's exactly what it was. It was glossy. It was well acted. Um, it was Spanish, but which on this show means it's going to be good. <laughs> it does uh, for some reason. It does. And it didn't pull the rug out from under me. Yeah. This did. Yeah, agreed. And for me, that gives it the edge. Fair. I agree. I I think we put this at the top of the stream. I think it is. I think The Invisible Guest is a better film. But this one, like you say, is what this is more of what we're looking for on this show. This is a little hidden gem that nobody's heard of that is good, fun, and really enjoyable to watch. Yeah. But ultimately, that's what we're here to do. You put this on of a Friday or Saturday night, you're going to come away and go, fuck me, I didn't expect that. Yeah. That same. was good. Agreed. I've, I've had a proper good time watching that. Strong recommend. You, you watch everyone else going, this film was shit. Fucking idiots. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this as well. And it I, was, I didn't know if you would because you just got back from holiday. And that, you'd that's be a the bit thing. Like, it was like, oh, I don't know if I could to watch this movie because I've got to watch it. I didn't have that feeling from it. I think if it had been some of the other films we picked this season, I probably would have had that feeling. But even before I started watching this, I was like, I've got a good feeling about this and I'm quite looking forward to watching it. Yeah. So yeah, top of the stream. I've, Again, wow, there you go. This, this, I, we always said, didn't we, this, this season is not sewn up. No, not at all. That's the last two weeks Nothing in a row. Nothing has strode away at the top. No. So it was always there for the taking. We've got two chances to beat it. Yeah. And it's possible. It is possible, but this isn't. Un- <laughs> this is not untouchable. No, it isn't. Um, it's very good, but it is not untouchable. Correct. However, <laughs> <laughs> we have one wild card left to play. This. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I had slightly forgotten about that. Um, as you will all know if you listen regularly, if you are one of our patrons, you get a wild card to play, so you can pick the film. Uh, me and Nick also get one. So in currently, there are five wild cards to play in a season. Yes. Jordan Shenton, the other guy from Grief Burrito who yep. is in Harrison Wild, he, he played his wild card at me. Oh, did he? He did. He's the last remaining wild card of the season with two films left. Do you just like to? Would you just like to remind people what you've done to us this season? <laughs> at the start of this season, me and Nick both agreed that <laughs> the wild card race this season should be a race to the bottom of the stream. Try and pick the worst film. And we'll see who picks the worst film. Okay. Since then, Nick's been blaming me for this. <laughs> However, we did both agree <laughs> on it. Jordan this week played his wild card and has given us a film that may be a contender. Wild wild card. Card. It's been on the long list for as long as I can remember. Okay. Possibly since the beginning. Um, it is a film called Threat Star. Okay. Uh, this is the poster. I think it has been on there for a long it time. It has been since the very beginning, I believe. I do recognise that thumbnail. Um. Frat Star is a comedy drama okay. set in a frat house. We've always, we already had one of those this season with um, All of My Friends Are Dead, which was a comedy drama set in a student house. Yeah. That's right at the top of the stream. Well, right up there. That was bonkers, so, that, that movie. That was bonkers. That fifth in the table yeah. now. Uh, I don't feel like this one's going to be up with the dizzying heights of that. Um, well, that's you, the challenge. Would you like to know the synopsis? Yes, please. Fratstar explores the alluring, superficial, manipulative, and dark world of Ivy League fraternity culture. Okay. An insecure, poor, and broken-hearted Nick enters freshman year with no interest in fraternities. This all changes when his old money roommate, Billy, convinces him to pledge. Okay. Currently, it's rated a 3.6 out of 10 on IMDb. Ooh. That's low. That's pretty low. It's a low bar. I'm currently winning the wild card race this season of the Hungover Games, which is currently rooted at the bottom of the table. Yeah. Jordan might have a chance here. The one upside I can see to this film okay. is that it stars Chris Elliott, who you will know is Roland Shit from Shit's Creek. Oh, really? Yes. I mean, you say <laughs> it's got a chance, but he's been in some he's been in some terrible dog shit films. movies. He really has. Um, yeah, he's in it alongside loads of young, good-looking, studenty type people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, the final wild card of the season. Was like, all five have been played. So we've got this one left and obviously whatever comes out as the finale sure. to try and beat this week's film villains to the top. Okay. I don't think Frat Star's got the balls to do it. I don't think it's got the legs. If it can get to the top, I'd be amazed. But I feel like we'd be talking bottom of the stream next week or close to the bottom of the stream. Next well, that's week. the goal for yes. this, this season's wild card. So hopefully so. the finale will be good because we need a good film to end on. <laughs> That's definitely not been the case <laughs> in past seasons. So. Very true. So yeah, go out and watch Frat Star. And in the meantime, come and check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Letterboxd. All the same username at BOTS underscore podcast. If you want to drop us an email, you can do that at bottom of the stream at gmail.com. If you want to check out the website, 
The website is bottomofthestream.com. On the website, you'll find every episode we've ever recorded, all five season stream tables, loads of other cool stuff, and you can even get some merch if you want to buy a Bottom of the Stream pen. Uh, come and join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Bottom of the Stream is where you'll find that on there for a couple of quid every month. You'll get early access to episodes, bonus episodes. Nick writes a newsletter every month. And if you come in at the top level, you'll get a world card. So you can do what Jordan's just done and make us watch a film for one particular week. And after you've done all that, come and check us out in Discord. We'll have loads of cool chats in there. There's always people to Taskmaster's about to come back. So the Discord's about to pop off because <laughs> that's all we ever talk about in there. So yeah, come and join us in the Discord. The Discord link will be in the bottom of the show notes. So I just like you've used the phrase pop off. Pop off. Does that mean this things are going pop down? Pop off. Yeah. <laughs> Top's coming off this place. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Getting into the frat culture. <laughs> if you've got a few minutes, please consider leaving us a review anywhere that you can review podcasts. That could be a place like Podbean or Podchaser or iTunes. It's not called it's iTunes. It's not called iTunes for years. <laughs> it's not been done that for years. <laughs> Apple Podcasts yeah. or Spotify or cephalopod or any of those places because it really helps our algorithm and get the word out about our little show maybe you could cook a shepherd's pie skim off the mashed potato and write us a review in a mountain of mash you go richard dreyfus on us i was gonna say budger and badger style (laughs) (laughs) rest in peace budger is that the human one yeah okay he's dead oh yeah because the badger would be a puppet (laughs) yeah don't tell me the badger's dead the Badger's all right. Right, okay. Badger's dead. Rest in peace, Badger. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to mean anything. We've lost it. so many people. It is really not. So forget we just said that. Go out and check out Fratstar. And we'll be back on Monday for an episode of The Wave. And then we'll be back next Thursday to talk to you about Fratstar. Cheers. Bye. Bye.